a chance So say goodbye to everything you ever knew before And I'd understand if you went running out the door And I'll keep you safe And no harm will ever come to you, I swear And I'd kill if they even dare You know what? I decided I'm going to need to start printing these bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, yep. We're kind of getting old. That'd be great. And I was like, wait, where where are we? Okay, we're on. That would we're be rolling. great. We're rolling. Cheers. Here's to another new adventure. Hello. Welcome to my ladies' lair. Welcome. In our podcast loft, where we invite you into our home to listen to us, put us in your earballs, and maybe watch us now, I guess. We've had requests for videos, and that just, geez, thanks. Now I have to put makeup on every time. Before I sat there, well, it's about down time you started putting and, makeup on. Ow. Shut up, Richard. Hey, boo. Hey. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for. We do. Each other. First and foremost, our my our kids, absolutely, and our family, all a great bunch of people. Our listeners, you guys, we hit a thousand downloads. That's just downloads. We don't know how many people just listen to it without downloading. So that was amazing. It's so hard to say. I right? literally jumped and danced and screamed. Ask Boot. I thought we'd yep. have five listens, and I figured that would be us listening. Right, us. our own <laughs> checking our own selves <laughs> Listening out. Listening to our own damn self. It's like writing songs while looking into a mirror. We have steady work, a home over our heads. We have so many cool things. Bleed the water. Bleed the water gave us some merch. Oh they my did. gosh! Bleed think, the water gave us some merch, and so we're gonna have to figure but, out. Oh, you have it right there. Yeah, nice. We're gonna have to figure out. Yeah, we a featured way. them. Next thing you know, they're they're sending us all kinds of cool stuff. We're gonna have to pins, out stickers. A way to give these away. Sorry that didn't come in very well. But we're this not giving one, it all away. I, I want to keep oh, some of it. We're keeping the Michigan. Look at that. Absolutely. It's got Michigan on it. It's cool. Anyway, so we'll be giving away two stickers and a pin. We'll figure out a way to do that some other time when we're not doing eight hundred other new things. We have new listeners this week. Yes, we do. We have Lisa S. from my, what what did I call it? From the place of my Your birth. Your birth. My yeah, birth. Where, where the it's, second half of the accident happened. <laughs> what? <laughs> I talked to your dad. I know what's going I, on. The Lakeview, Michigan. I, they do have a hospital there. Uh, some people call it a hospital. I prefer to say I was born in the barn. It was 1971, for Christ's sakes. The hospital yeah. hasn't even improved that much since Oh, my God, then. you're old. Fuck off. Next time, more things to throw. Oh, yep. Also, Stephen King from Reading, Michigan. Who comes up with this stuff? I mean, it, it took me a is few his name to really that one Stephen out. King? Do we really have a Reading, Michigan? Yeah. I didn't. Look, yeah. We do. Yeah. We do. There's so many yeah. towns in Michigan. I can't keep up with them. Thank so, you. That, that was really good. We also yep, have Stephen King. Thank you. Heidi S., She's from Michigan. Heidi S. And we have Emin, 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 Emin. <laughs> It's Megan. Megan. Megan M. From Michigan. See? Emin, 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 Emin. It's M, M, M. Michigan, Megan, Megan. Never mind. Thank you for putting us in your ears. And allowing us to seep into your brain. That's very brave of you. Where are yep. we going to today, Mr. Boot? We are going to Midland, Michigan. Let me pull out the map. And show you. You said where. pull out. <laughs> Look at this. This is our map of Michigan. Um, we have backing up right here, and right here we're also going to Mount Pleasant. Very close. Just a straight shot across M20. Very close. It's blurry, but you yeah. can figure it out. <laughs> yep. Google that anyway. shit. Let's go, boot. Let's start the story. In 1974, a man in his 20s was convicted of sexual assault. The young lady, the victim, was 14 years old. Just a girl. 
1975, while out on parole from the previous conviction, he assaulted another young woman. Yep. And then after his prison sentence was complete in 1977... 1977, he was yeah. released, and then two months later, he committed yep. his third known horrific act. I mean, obviously, the sexual things were horrific, but this is... Yeah, and probably more, because people just don't come forward. They they just, like, they're embarrassed or whatever. If you catch him whatever. for three, you can guarantee there's a lot more that you did not catch him for. Yep. Friday, September 23rd, 1977... Mrs. A went to a local ball bar ball <laughs> called the Western. Yep, there's. I, I think there's a, a bar in every town called the Western. There's also or something sand bar westernly everywhere. named Sandbar. Sand bar almost every time. All ooh, sorry, all across. I, I just apologize to my microphone. Anyways, she <laughs> she went to the bar without her husband. We are doing horribly. This, this one couple has an agreement you know when she wants to go out she doesn't want him with her because in the past they've fought that you know all kinds of you know you get alcohol involved and your amygdala basically they realize your amygdala all that stuff they realized they couldn't go out together because they got drunk and probably a bitch got jealous oh and then they might have fought i don't know anything about that yep so they had this you know, this agreement that they would go out separately. And they basically had separate sets of friends also. Yep. So it was her turn to go out. She checked down to the Western with and some co-workers. Mr. A stayed home with the kids. Yeah. Taking care of the kids. You don't need to get a babysitter. Much easier you know, when dad you're married. Dad can do it. When it's like, what? Dad, Why I need not? to get away from all of you guys. I'm stepping out. I'm stepping oh. out. I mean, not in mm-hmm. that way, stepping out. But. So you think she was, did, did you see pictures of her, like, with a floppy 70s hat? Because you put this in the notes. No, I, this was an actual fact. Okay. Mm-hmm. The old floppy 70s leather hat and probably yeah, bell bottoms. Yeah, she had. And all, the, all the garb that those ladies used her. to wear. I feel like she's got a little bit of hippie in her. Yep, probably like some fringe. Sadly, mm-hmm. she was never seen again after that night. And her husband didn't worry about her all weekend. He figured she was out drinking and staying with friends. I don't know. It you was know, kind it of a seems common, a little strange to me. It does, but I, you know, just like the last story we had, everybody has their thing, and we don't know what it's like behind closed doors. Yep. He, she was known to go out drinking and partying, and not to come home. And she was dependable. She, it and wasn't responsible. cell phone era, so you couldn't just right. be like, "Hey." Yep. But. Monday morning came around, and she didn't show up for work. Yeah. And that's when Mr. A said... He he filed a missing persons report. Right. This is not okay. She's been missing for three days now. Yeah, two or three days. I don't know, two and a half, whatever. (sighs) With a bit of investigation, small town style, I'm sure it didn't take them very long, they discovered that the person who she was arguing with at the Western Bar was Robert Lee Haggard. I know. Don't don't call him Robert E. Lee. It's really you just keep to hearing that Robert the whole e. time I do in too. your head. It's just another one of those fucking names. It's like, why did you name your son Robert Lee when you know everyone's instantly gonna say Robert E. Lee? Yep. Robert E. Lee Hager. I even typed it in that way while searching at so, numerous times. Two Sorry. weeks later, hunters found the body of. Mrs. A, we have her name written here, but Good job. We're, yeah, we're not going to say that. They found her body in the backwoods, six miles south of West Branch. Off- Let's be clear: the backwoods is six miles anywhere. Like we can be here, kind of go six miles that way. We're in the back fucking woods. Yeah, go up north, go six miles off the Ooh, expressway. You're in the backwoods. Serious backwoods. If you go more than six miles, mm, yeah, you gotta gotta be watch careful. Yourself. Just kidding. People are great. But so they, the hunters found that in 1977. Can you what a imagine? Horrible, no, I can't. Across that, no. It'd be awful. She was fully clothed. Her shoes and purse and, and distinct floppy, floppy leather, hat leather hat were all missing. Her items were later found in the Titabawassee River. Good job, my lady. <laughs> we can't wait to say Titabawassee. Uh, Mrs. A. On M20. So basically, he. 
Yeah, three when, shit off the river on M20. Over, like, Yeah, some sort of overpass Velocity. somewhere. Yep. Mrs. A's case went cold for years. Yeah, despite finding out Finding out who she was arguing arguing with, she there just wasn't enough evidence to convict anyone, even once her body was found. Right. She was 29 years old. Yeah. She left behind her loving husband, children, and, geez, you know, they're all just wondering throughout their lives what the What heck happened? And on top happened. of that, there was the suspicion of Mr. A. And right. they did all take polygraph tests, but nothing was ever proved, so... You know, they always look at the husband or somebody close. So he yep. always kind of lived with that suspicion kind of hanging over his head a yep. little bit. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. For years, for years and for years and for years. And this case became one of Michigan's oldest cold cases. In 1981, Robert Hager marries Garnetta and they moved to Tennessee. I want to move to Tennessee. It's beautiful. You know, I like Tennessee. It's gorgeous. Yep. Robert was known to be a livestock auctioneer, or as you put it in your notes, an engineer. engineer. I almost googled it. I was like, I don't what know the how they do that. A livestock like, engineer. Well, he's you know he's got his graphs out and his charts I thought and maybe drawings they were, and you know special genetic things. He's engineering these I was livestock. Thinking there was like some cloning of like. I'm sure. Love these guys. And then he's yeah, like, hey, better, 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 can I get a, hey, better, 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 yeah, can I get a hundred for the cow? Can I get a hundred fun for the cow? Hey, better, better, can I get two hundred for the cow? Two hundred for the engineered cow. Better, 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 better. <laughs> that works so well on occasions. It's I'll crazy. never do that again because I know where you sleep. Oh, okay. After just six months, Garnetta, 23 years old, files for divorce. This is his newest wife. Mm -hmm. uh, six months, that's a pretty short period of time, but that's, she man. moves to Florida and didn't your second marriage last? That was up? faster than my second marriage for sure. Yeah, that's, that's remarkable. marriage didn't even last I don't know year. how you did that. So uh, I was drunk. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so was, she moved to Florida. I was just a mess. <laughs> as my mom died, as drunk, it okay. doesn't count. It didn't count. So the date for the divorce proceedings in Michigan were scheduled, and she drove up from Florida. Mm -hmm. Yep. The date proceedings were actually set for February 17th, 1984. Man, a lot of years go by. That, Robert. That's crazy. Oh, my God. It seems like forever ago. Uh, yeah, Robert headed to Michigan via a Greyhound bus, and we know that because the Greyhound bus ladies or drivers testified in court. <laughs> Later. Oh my God, top of the hour to ya. Good morning, my lady. Oh, good morning. Your Highness. I'm glad you've got your watch set for so every hour. So now we know hour. what time it is. Yeah. Good yep. Lord. Now we know. We don't even know what time it is today, because who cares? It's 1.58. That's the time I have my alarm set for. All it. right. It's going to so beep again in two minutes. He gets here in a Greyhound bus. I used to like riding on Greyhound buses. We rode a Greyhound I had to. bus once. Yeah, it, the smell of diesel fumes, and it's all warm in there, and people were smoking in the back. It, it was You know what? People were crazy. probably smoking when my brother and I rode one to Charlevoix one year. Uh -huh. And I remember him laughing at me because I curl. You know how I can curl up like Annabella? Hell oh, yeah, just in a, the smallest little spot. Yeah, I'm yeah. like a little baby fetus. I did yep. that on the bus. But I was only seven then, so of course I could do it, but I still do it now. Yeah, you do. I don't know how Anyways, you do it. Anyways, that was a side note. Yep. So they rode this Greyhound, or he, he rode a Greyhound bus up to Michigan. And on February 16th, Mrs. A's family was going to get together as an impromptu gathering. You know, most of her family still lived up there. So uh, they were going to try to come over to the to the house and, and visit and just, her. Yep. Have a little get together. The Very impromptu. family, Gerald and Vondry, these names are fantastic. They're both well-known community citizens. Um, their lives would be changed forever on this day. Yeah. This Monday in 1981 did change their lives and the lives of all the small town people. Robert Haggard had stalked the Post family home. This, this is in Midland. So you saw that on the map, right? You know where that is. It's in the middle of nowhere. Neighbors had kind, seen him kind of creeping around the yep. night before. He was doing that in the night. Creepy weird. The 
that day he waited he, for the family to return to their home. Yeah, he was with in a the shotgun house. in his hand. Yeah, but so that that's messed up. He waited in silence in the home with a shotgun. And later that evening, Garnetta's sister-in-law and her husband arrived late to this family gathering. It's a good thing because they probably would have been oh part of the massacre, gosh. which it's is a good exactly thing, but, what happened. Oh, they have to live with what they. Oh, they found. Yeah, they <sighs> found the carnage. They. Uh, when she arrived, the home was dark. She entered the house freely, as a lot of people. F- do around you know, I mean the, I go the into outskirts. Rocky and Hillary's house and sure, just walk I in. Want. Yeah. She was hollering for them and nobody responded. So she turned mm-hmm. on the lights in the kitchen. And that's when she discovered the bodies of yeah. Garnetta and Vondry in the kitchen. She tried the kitchen phone um to call the police and I'm envisioning the old it absolutely was a murdery oh, phone. You know it. The the only phone in the house was in the kitchen. Yes. It's and like everybody's it house. had that really long cord on it. Oh, yeah. So you could cool walk into the... On the horn, yeah. horn thing when Go it was talk actually your, looked like a horn. Your girlfriend just, yeah. just outside of mom's earshot. <laughs> like stretched that cord. Oh, yeah. Anyways, she tried to call. The cord was cut. They cut the cord. So she checked the, to the, the neighbor's house to call the police. Unfortunately, when the police came back, did they not only find those two bodies, but they found a oh, fucking massacre of the Post family. Just a just bloody mess. In a total. Almost an annihilation of the family, which is just insane. Skits weird. Seven family members were killed, shot to death by this. You said POS. That what does that mean? It's I'm a not piece of fucking shit. Oh. In the basement, they found Mrs. A's father, well, Gerald, and in a truck outside were the bodies of Gerald's daughter. Is a mixed family. You know how it is. There's step brothers, step sisters, all yeah. that stuff. Yep. And kind of a blended all that family. Shit. So in the truck outside, they found Gerald's daughter and her four children. The one-year-old was tucked underneath the the dash. Hold up. Ages 10, 8, 4, and 1. So four kids under the age of 10. Mom tucked the one-year-old under the dash and laid over her of all eight people at that household that evening. The one-year-old survived. She survived. I... Honestly, wanted to look into her life so bad because, wow. What a mess, though. She doesn't want to hear it. No, just, exactly. Just because we're voyeuristic and want to. I don't think it's voyeuristic. I think it, it, it kinda, is slightly voyeuristic. We were raised on, yeah, we were raised on true crime crap. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of one of those things. So Right. Anyways. Yeah. So a citizen came forward claiming that whoever it was gave Robert a ride into Farwell. Yeah. Farwell. If you get the map, it's not far from. (laughs) It's not far. I'm going to have to trust you with that because I don't feel like picking up the map again. Yeah. The police followed his ass back to Tennessee. Wasn't too hard because he fucking took a bus. Huh? Ticket, name on the ticket, all that kind of stuff. They found him. And he was charged with seven counts of murder with seven life sentences. He he won big time. That's like hitting the lottery. Seven, seven, seven. Seven life sentences, seven murders in 1982. Let us travel back to our original story. Do you remember? Why did I say Mrs. A? Um... Well, because her cold case is still open. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Take given, it, boot. Given that Robert's <laughs> rampage went national, news-wise, it brought out a few people who knew a little bit more about Robert. This tends to happen, you know? Is it back yeah. then? It kind of took a minute. Oh, it totally took it a took minute. It took a few minutes. But, Not you know, like there, today. Right we don't now, have internet like back two, then. Like two seconds and everybody in the world and their brothers, sisters, mommies, daddies. Oh, yeah. Babies, everyone's daddies. like, oh, 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 me too. Oh, I, it, I, it, it, I know. this to me. I know. I know that guy. <laughs> right. In 2007, 
A journalist called the detective, and he revealed some information regarding Robert yeah. that Robert told him in an interview. It turns out that this journalist is writing a book about Robert. I should read that They were that childhood book. friends. It's probably a good thing the I didn't read the book because this would be child- a five-hour episode. He yeah, was- they were childhood friends. They went to school together in little baby Midland. A lot of nothing around there at the time. I need to read that book. Don't know the name. But listen to this shit, Boot. Listening. 77, it wasn't common for them to keep DNA stuff because we didn't know anything about DNA yet. I, I have to wonder if that was just kind of a happenstance thing. They had a bloody sock or something. It was, Some, a, it was a crispy sock. It, it just sock. happened to... Remember the crispy t-shirt yes. we found? Exactly. That's the kind of DNA they Gross. found. Sorry, just it is gross, but that's what it was. Icky all over. It was a semen filled thing with semen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with that evidence, they pinned him. Yeah, yeah, they pinned him with to with Mrs. The- A's death, which happened way back when in 1977. Yep. So, holy shit. So, fortunate, unfortunate, I'm not sure how to interpret this. There's all kinds of... He he actually, Robert died in prison in 2003 before he could be brought to trial again for anything. But it did clear up this cold case. Yeah, it's it's such a sick fucking twist because it's like... It's, it's, it's closure. Horribly, horribly, horribly awful thing happened to this family, and it uh, wiped out their whole family, right? Oh, yeah. And the, but it gave this other family whose mom had been missing for years closure. And yeah. it freed up the dad who had been under suspicion forever. Like, it finally was like, hey, dude, you didn't really do it. Because, of course, everybody's going to secretly think he did it. Oh, yeah, you know. It's the way so you know humans he did it, right? are. Just look at him. You can see it in his eyes. He did it. He's guilty. So, yeah, the piece of shit died in prison in 2003, giving the family closure after 32 Goddamn years. It's a long time. 32 years of not knowing. Mm. Losing a parent to anything is shit. So Losing a parent and not knowing anything for, oh my gosh. I can't even fathom. I know. Mrs. A's daughter did thank the detective for his years of doggered, doggered pursuit in the case. Yep. As with many killers who started the way Robert did in this story. There were most likely more assaults, more murders, more victims, more unreported things that could link anything else to him. You know what? Yeah. He lived in the country. You know what that fucker did when he was a kid? Oh, he probably tortured animals and set barns on fire. He did all the explicit warnings that we've already said. Yeah. Walked around with a femur from a human. That he... Peed in his mom's coffee. (laughs) What? Probably shot squirrels and did weird things. Never never mind. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that only the things he was caught for were the only things that he did. So basically, with a shot, don't you have to reload a shotgun? We've talked about this before. Yeah, it depends on the shotgun. I'm not good at guns. Some you just go... But I will pop a cassette. You can... We're gonna pop your ass. a cap. Yeah, I was gonna pop a cap in your ass. Okay, so if you got a shotgun, you gotta reload usually at least two, right? Well, it depends on the <laughs> kind barrel. of shotgun. But yeah, okay, we'll we'll go with a double barrel shotgun. Yeah. Are there more than two shots? Well, there are shotguns that are designed, and I don't know when this technology came into fruition, but there are shotguns where they you pump them. And it <laughs> loads another, and you can load several rounds. In and then there. the, you can see the casings go. Chicka, yeah, chicka, chicka. That's yeah, probably you, what he had. You got it. Okay. So do we have a happy no, ending? No, we're this? not done with this, are we? Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I feel like we are done with it. Yeah. No, we're not. We need to talk about the sheriff's quote because it was a great. Oh. I feel like it should be a quote that should be in our podcast every 
fucking time. Great, great, great quote from Sheriff Jerry Nielsen. Let us raise our glass to this. To the living, we owe to. respect. To the dead, we owe the truth. Hmm. Guy died in prison. Got hopefully some prison, you know. Oh. Mm. Uh oh. Some, and the you set. Know what, boot? Mm. So what? we have she to get a hold trip. of the people called the why. Seekers. And the Seekers I, no, are I the. But I, they have tell all me. of the ghost things. <laughs> like the supernatural dudes yeah, have. Fuck the EMF. And oh, I yeah, was yeah. researching this. It's all pretend this. stuff with little noise generators. Yes. And, uh, and that there make was. We're going. Oh, we are going to get a night behind the camera. And we are going to get high. And we are going to get property. We are going into that. Of course, I wasn't fired. I am doing. Oh, that cheesy when you showed me? Yeah, I don't want to see that ever again. Fresh kill. Yeah, yeah, we got majorly no, busted. It <laughs> wasn't majorly. Majorly, I, we would have had it's our awful. F-rated no, movie. We're not going to promote it. Anyway, close to that. He's I bad. feel like Roger Schultz could come with us because he's a ghost yeah, he's, entrepreneur. He's one of those the girls. Yeah, you know what? We're filming I mean, your highness. The girl from what? Fresh oh, Kills. Looks like that episode's done. That she had. We need to um, end this with a happy with ending. Supernatural. And oh, yeah. well, we have um, a really good yes. band that we are going Wait to up. feature tonight. She had experiences wow. the hey, supernatural nice world. Shot. Yes. Nice shot, man. So this band we are going to feature tonight, we've seen several times, and these guys are just a bunch of fun-loving individuals that goof around like champions. Would you like to which I appreciate. talk about your Halloween experience seeing them? Yeah, No. Okay. No, that was... Uh, he got titty no. raped. And yeah, that, we're on. This is our happy ending and this, our good note. This group of fine young gentlemen is called the Swinehearts. Say ah, into my mic. The Swinehearts. My mic. Why are you better. doing this again? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> my mic is better. You're this hurting me. very soft. <laughs>
Thank you for choosing Michigan Murders and Music. Please rate the show wherever you listen. Michigan Murders and Music is produced by The Boots. Episodes are researched and written by Your Highness. Edited by Your Highness. Views and opinions are the sole stupidity of us and us alone. Don't blame others, please. Listening to this podcast could quite possibly cause major problems to your earballs and definitely will mess up your kids. Permission has been given to us by the bands and we purchase our music on Bandcamp.com. Support your local music scene and all local music scenes.